Okay. So today we'll use a strap. Let me just go get mine. Um, not everyone has a strap, so there's other things you can use. So don't panic if, um, you don't have one, or if you don't have one like this, that loops, but we do want to make a big loop with this strap if you can. So typically the straps will have two rings. And what you do is take the, the end of the strap, slide it between both rings, and then you come back through one ring. So just like that. And then you have a loop and a tail that you can pull to adjust the size of the strap. And then you'll just set it off to the side. You don't really need it to start, but you do want a bigger loop. And if you have a strap that doesn't loop, then that's fine. Don't worry about this part. I'll give you something else to do once we get to that. Um, once we get there. Okay. So let's start today. Um, seated. So you could sit up on a block if you want to. What's nice about that is we'll come to butterflies. So soles of the feet together, knees wide. Some of us, the knees are up really high. And that just means that the hips are tight. It's not a big deal, but we want the hips to be higher than the knees ideally, or not have such a big difference between the height and the hips and have the knees way higher. So that's where the block comes in handy. If you lift the hips, the knees will go lower for all of us. Some of us, the knees are low enough and you don't need the blocks, but for a lot of us, it offers some comfort. So those are your options. If you're practicing without props, just do it without props. It's not a big deal. Sit up tall and you can just rest the hands wherever they fall. So if you have the hips lifted, you're not going to be able to reach as far forward and that's fine. Just keep a long spine, eyes closed, sitting up tall. Take a deep breath in through the nose. Back out through the mouth. Inhale in through the nose. Back out through the mouth. Inhale in through the nose. Exhale back out through the mouth. This time in through the nose. Back out through the nose. Stay with this breath in and out through the nose, moving the breath up and down the back of the throat. And then from here, you can stay right where you are. If you want a little bit more of a hip opening, you could start to hinge forward so that you're leaning the chest forward over the legs. And that's putting more weight on the hips, the inner thighs, um, that opening in the lower half of the body. Sometimes forward folds can aggravate any uh, issues that you have happening in the lower back. If that's the case for you, then you want to keep a straighter back with the heart reaching forward. If your lower back is fine, you can round the spine, let the head and the neck go. And you're not going as deep as you possibly can. So just go part of the way, especially with leaning forward, you'll naturally fall deeper into the pose. So there's no need to push it. You just get it started and then see where it ends up.
staying right where you are. Notice where you ended up. It probably isn't where you started. Start to lift the head and the chest, coming back up slowly. Bring the hands to the outer knees to bring the knees back together. And then separate the feet. So you want a wide stance. The toes are, are pointing out, knees and toes in the same direction. You can stay up on the block if you want to or bring the hips down. And then you'll bring the hands down in front of um, in front of you. So if this is difficult, sitting up on a block really helps and makes this a lot easier. But again, you'll just start to come forward between the legs. So staying in the hips, let the head and the neck go. You can round the spine, let the head and the neck go. Or you can start to walk the chest forward, uh, re keeping the spine long. So, and then blocks underneath the hands could help too, especially if the, the mat feels far away, it can keep the spine long and allow you to still lean forward. So you get that hip opening at the same time. So much of this practice is figuring out what works best in your body. So closing your eyes, listening to the feedback that you're getting, and then seeing where you can make adjustments makes this a, a great way to customize things for yourself. And you could stay right here. You could also lift the chest and extend the legs out and straighten them. If you're already, the last one's easier than this. So if you'd rather stay there, stay there. If it feels good to straighten out the legs, fold forward for the rest of the hold, you're welcome to. Just keep it easy. Meaning don't push yourself deep into the pose. And let's start to walk ourselves back up, getting the head over the hips again. If the legs are extended out, grab onto the backs of the thighs, keep the soles of the feet on the mat, but the toes turned out and the feet wide. You can bring the hands back behind you, lean back and move the knees side to side, like windshield wipers. And that movement should feel good. We held those poses for quite a while since it's yin, we have longer holds with less effort. Then you'll come back to seated. If you're up on a block, just set it off to the side, have your strap nearby, just set it off to the side of the hips. Come on down onto your back, resting the head down on the mat. If you need some padding under the head, that's fine, but try not to lift the head too much. So if you have a looped strap, you're going to loop the sole. Let's loop the sole of the left foot into the strap with any strap you have. So if you have the loop, just ignore it. You don't need it right now. Just make sure that the buckle, if you do have a loop strap is somewhere, uh, in the middle. So, um, it's not touching the body at all, but it's still within reach and place the strap just at the top of the, uh, top of the arch 
right below the ball of the foot. And you want some tension on the strap. Toes come down toward the face, heel lifts up. Now you're getting into the backside of the left leg. So if you don't have a loop, you're staying right here. If you don't have a strap, you can interlace the fingers behind the back of the thigh. If you do have a loop, you can have a little bit of fun, see how this goes. So we're all practicing with different lengths of straps. This one that I'm practicing with is actually fairly short. So um, it might already work. So I make like a triangle uh, with the strap. I open up the, the strap with my two hands, lift the head up and then bring the head into the strap. So I like to put it over the ears. You don't want it on the neck. And then if you feel like your strap's too big, this is where you pull the tail of the strap to make it tighter, adjust it. Ideally, you wanna be able to have the same tension you had when you were holding the strap with the hands. So once you get it, you're pushing the foot away from you and the head is trying to go back toward the mat at the same time. And that gives you a nice opening on the neck, backside of the left leg, arms can just go down by the sides, palms face up but it may take you um, some time to get the, the strap right where you want it. And then right foot can stay on the mat or you could extend that right leg forward. We've already done some leg opening, so it may be more available. Just make sure your lower back's okay with that. Sometimes when we keep both legs long, it takes away space from the lower back. If that's happening, then you just slide the right foot back to the mat. Eyes can close once you get comfortable. If that's something that's comforting for you, not all of us find comfort with the eyes closed. If you have your head in the strap, grab both ends of the strap in front of you and then lift the head, set it back down onto the mat and you're back to where we started, just hanging onto both ends of the strap. Left leg is still up. Grab both ends of the strap with the right hand, wherever you are, left arm can reach out to the side. So listen carefully, this left foot is right over the hip. It's not gonna move very far. You're not going more than a foot. You might only move an inch to the right. We're trying to feel something on the outside of this left leg. So it's not a twist, both hips stay down on the mat. Some of you will feel it right away. Some of us need to go farther uh, to the right. If you're finding that you're going more than a foot to the right, then start to bring the leg in closer to the body. So those are the two directions over to the right and toward the body. And you want to move as little as you want to move that foot over as little as possible, just right where you start to feel something happen on that IT band. And over the course of this hold, you might start to lose that feeling, that sensation on the outer left leg. If that happens, then you just keep adjusting. So maybe the foot comes in a little bit closer. And once you get enough tension on the strap, you could just slide the hand back until the right elbow rests down on the mat. So that way everything else can relax in the upper body.
You also might find that that left foot starts drifting too far over to the right as you become more relaxed. So check in every once in a while, see if the foot needs to come in closer to the body instead of more over to the right. And you'll bring the left foot back to center, take the foot out. Uh, actually, let's loop the sole of the right foot into the strap. That's an easier transition. Set the left foot down onto the mat. And we'll start here. So place the sole of the foot or place the strap at the top of the arch, just below the ball of the foot, bring the toes down toward the face, heel lifts, stay here. Some of you have a looped strap. So make a triangle with the strap, pulling the um, hands apart so you can lift the head up, bring the head into the strap over the ears, make sure the straps away from the neck. It's just at the base of the skull. You might need to tighten or loosen the strap. The same size loop might not work on both legs and then arms can come down by the sides. You start to push that foot away from you. The head pulls back at the same time and you get this hammock sensation with the way the loop of the strap is supporting you. Left foot can stay where it is, or you could slide it forward. Toes point up. You can relax the leg and the foot once you have it. Check in with your lower back. Make sure it's happy with this shape. If not, bring the sole of the left foot to the mat. And if your head's in the strap, grab both ends of the strap with the hands, lift the head up, set it back down onto the mat. And then uh, once you have that, if you're still using the strap, grab onto both ends of the strap with the left hand, right arm can come out to the side, bring the foot in toward the body a little bit, see how much room there is there, and then start to bring that right foot over to the left couple inches, maybe a little bit more. Try not to go too far over. It turns into a twist and you get out of um, getting into the side, the outside edge of that right leg. And then once you have it, 
slide the hand back so that the elbow can rest down by your side. You may need to check in and bring the leg in a little closer every once in a while if you're losing that sensation outside of the right leg. It's a subtle movement. and bring the foot back to center, release the strap, set it off to the side, bring the knees in toward the chest. You can rock side to side a little bit and set the feet down onto the mat, roll over to one side, use the hands to bring yourself up to seated. So this next pose, Let's come forward onto our stomach, but first let's grab, if you have a bolster, let's use a bolster and a blanket. If you have both, if you just have one, that's fine. Bolster's ideal. You want to bring that the wide way in the center of the mat. If you have a blanket, you need to make a roll with the blanket. So you want it to be maybe like this size in a square and then roll it up tight. Put this at the back of the mat. So that's there. Then you'll come to hands and knees. Once you get to hands and knees, hands in front of the bolster, knees behind the bolster, you'll bring the top of the foot, that part of the foot or that part of the body where the foot and the leg connect on top of the uh, blanket roll. So ideally your toes aren't touching the mat. That's the whole point is it's an ankle roll. And then remove the bolster so that if you were to lie forward on it, it would only support the hips, not your navel. You want to make sure your stomach's free. So this doesn't make you sick. So start to, to glide forward, land the hips on the bolster belly button is ahead of the bolster. It is not resting on the bolster. So you want to keep that free. And then two options with the upper body, you can either stack one hand on top of the other, rest the forehead straight down. Some people prefer to bring the arms down by the sides and turn the head to one direction. 
So either one of those is okay for the upper body. Choose one that makes you feel more comfortable and rested. And this is a back bend. So you're lying on your stomach. It would be a back bend even if you don't have a bolster. So if you're practicing without props, there's nothing underneath you and you're still in a slight back bend. It is a deeper back bend once you start to lift the hips up with the bolster. And the blanket you don't really need. That's just there for comfort. I like it. You can do this with the feet resting um, straight down on the mat. And you'll start to lift the head up, bring the hands to the mat, wherever they are, come back up to hands and knees, and you'll uh, just set the bolster off to the side. So it's available if you need it. And then the, the blanket you don't need, so you can unroll it, put it back to however it was back of the mat. Actually, you could use it for padding underneath the knees if your knees are sensitive, but you're probably already doing that if that happens. So come back to hands and knees. We're coming into melting heart pose. If you know this doesn't work for you, come onto your stomach and do sphinx pose as an alternative, but you'll keep the, the hips right over the knees. So thighs stay vertical, forearms and elbows come down to the mat, belly hugs in. So even here, let the belly go and you feel how the lower back dips. And for some of us, that feels good. Hug the belly in and then reach the heart forward. That's how you keep the spine long. So keep that integrity in the spine. Maybe you start to walk the elbows forward a little bit. So you feel more of an opening in the upper body. This will be a long hold. So don't go too far into it. Rest the forehead down on the mat. Once the forehead touches down, there's that pressure point in the forehead that kicks the cooling response on might make you come become more relaxed. It might allow without you even realizing it for the belly to relax, but you need to hold that in a little bit. So you keep that length going forward. Try not to let the hips move forward. Those stay right where they were when you were set up in tabletop.
So if you'd like, you're welcome to stay here. I'll give you another option, which will make things a little bit deeper. We'll get into the upper body a little bit more. Skip it if you've got enough to chew on. Hands could come together. So palms of the hands together. And then you could bring the hands back behind the head. If that feels really good, see if you can walk the elbows forward. And you want the elbows in line with the shoulders. So if they're going out wider, bring them in. Keep hugging the belly in, reaching the heart forward to keep that spine long. Try not to take the hips forward, even though you've adjusted the upper body. If you have the hands back behind the head, bring them back down in front of you. We'll all start to lift the head back up, walk the elbows back in, and then you'll come back up to tabletop one hand at a time. And if you're in Sphinx pose, come up to tabletop hands and knees. And then from here, we'll just do some cat cow to get some movement in the spine, nice and slow. So reach the heart forward, lift the tail on the inhale, which will feel familiar. Go slow on the exhale, rounding the spine. That's the exact opposite of what we did. So it doesn't need to be the deepest round, just one to kind of neutralize things. Then inhale forward. And exhale round, keep going on your own, Slub several slow rounds, keeping the breath nice and long. come back to a neutral spine, staying on your hands and knees, move the hips back a little bit. So you can bring the backs of the hands to the mat, fingertips point in toward the center of the mat and you have the fingers spread wide. So from here, you can stay right here, or you could start to play with bringing the shoulders forward, putting more weight on the backs of the hands, getting into those wrists, keeping the hands active because you're spreading them. Breathing in deeply through the nose, back out through the nose. It helps cool and calm the body. When you're just breathing on your own, you're not getting as much out of the shapes that we're coming in and out of. So once you do something that's a little bit more uncomfortable, the breath can tell the body that it's okay. And then that opening begins to happen. Start to shift the hips back, bring the palms of the hands back down to the mat. And then this time, turn the fingertips to point out toward the sides of the mat. So like a seal. And then from here, circle the shoulders over the wrists. Switch the direction, go the other way. Our hands do so much for us every day. It's nice to give them a little extra love. Wrists, forms, all of that, that whole area. 
Okay, so come back to neutral. So two options, turn one hand all the way around so the fingertips point toward um, the thigh. If that's a lot, then turn um, the other hand going the opposite direction. If you can do both hands, do both hands. If it's too much, then you just do one hand at a time. Stack the shoulders over the heels of the hands. And then from here, do cat cow. So reach the heart forward, lift the tail. And on the exhale, round. Keep going. If you have one hand going in a different direction, switch the hands to even things out and come back to your cat cow. Let's do one more cycle forward and back. You'll come back to a neutral spine, turn the hands back around. So fingertips point forward. You can bring the knees and feet all the way together. Come back to kneeling. So you're just sitting on the heels. If that works in your body, you can, if it doesn't just come to seated and then shake out the hands, keep the hands loose. You're just shaking them out. That was a lot of work. And then make fists with the hands as tight as you possibly can, and then open up the fingers as wide as you possibly can do that several times. You don't have to go very fast because you're trying to make the fists really tight. And then you're trying to open up the hands really wide. And you might even start to build some heat in the forms because you're gripping the hands so tight and spreading them open so wide. One more time. Okay, let's come to seated. So bring the feet over to one side, legs out in front of you. Get the hips so they're, if you're using a mat, get the hips so they're more in the center of the mat. And then come on down onto your back. So you're lying down. Feet on the mat, scoot the hips over to the right. Bring the knees over to the left. So you're coming into a reclined spinal twist. Chest is going to the right, knees are going to the left. Right arm can reach outside of the shoulder, maybe the hand in line with the shoulder. If that feels okay in your body, you can always go lower. Some people like to keep the arm overhead. Left hand can just rest somewhere on the body. And then I'll give you another option. So, well, I'll give you two options. So you could put something between the knees, like a block, a bolster, a blanket, and that brings some space to the lower back, especially if you're feeling uncomfortable here. Another option, we did a lot of opening on the legs and the hips already. You could extend the legs forward. So you're still doing a spinal twist, but instead of the knees being bent, they're straight because the legs are extended. And you can see how that feels. So remember how we got into the outer edges of the uh, legs, um, that outer edge of that right leg, the top leg might feel open enough for this. If it's too much, then just bend the knees. It's fine. And if it bothers your lower back, you bend the knees and maybe even put something between the knees. And then see where you can ease up. So if you feel like you're putting any effort anywhere, see where you can let that go. Sometimes when we straighten the legs, we start pushing out through the feet. See if you can relax them. Maybe that means there's a slight bend in the knees. That's fine.
And you'll start to bring the head back to center. If the legs are straight, bend them. Make your way onto your back again. Use the feet to get there. Once you do, bring the knees in toward the chest, hang on to the knees, keep the knees and the feet together, start to move the knees around in a circle. So that was a deeper twist. This is a nice way to counter that, just getting the hips to roll around underneath you on the mat. Before we switch sides. Okay, switch the direction of your circles, go the other way. And you'll set the feet back down to the mat. Scoot the hips over to the left. Knees come over to the right. Left arm reaches back behind you. You're going slow, so you can just feel your way into it. Make sure the body's okay with everything on this side, even though you just did it on the other side. We're often different side to side. Right hand can rest on the body. Maybe the gaze starts to go over the left shoulder. So you might be good here. Maybe you need something between the knees. If you enjoyed it on the first side, you could start to extend the legs forward and they don't have to be all the way straight. Feet don't have to be in line with the hips. They can be lower. So it can be some kind of in-between variation. You want to feel a nice, healthy twist. And you'll start to bring the head back to center. If the legs are straight, extended out in front of you, bend the knees, start to bring the feet back onto the mat, find center on your back. Knees come in toward the chest, which will feel really good just on its own. And then you'll start to take those circles, moving the knees in one direction and then the other. Set the feet back down onto the mat, roll over to one side, use the hands to bring yourself up. 
You're coming back to hands and knees. We'll do a child's pose. You can do child's pose without props. It's kind of nice with props if you want to use them. So you'll come up to hands and knees, big toes together, a lot of different ways you can use the props. So you could bring a bolster behind the knees, especially if it's difficult to get the hips back toward the heels. This is a great way to give yourself some space and rest the hips down on something. And then you come into your child's pose. You could take the bolster in front of you the long way. You could even build a ramp and put a block underneath um, the bolster. You just want the bolster to just go just between the knees. And this is great. If the hips are coming down pretty low, you can turn the head to one side, put the block wherever you want it. Some people like it. So it's right underneath the head rested. And if you feel like it's too high of a child's pose, skip the block, bring the head down. And if you want to go even deeper into it, you can skip the bolster altogether. Well, I'll give you one more option because I just thought of it. If you want more of a shoulder opening, you can bring the blocks down um, on the mat, lowest height out in front of you. And then you can rest the hands on the blocks and bring the forehead down to the mat. So choose your own adventure with child's pose today. Don't ever feel like uh, you have to compromise the knees to get the hips back. So you want the knees to be quiet and happy, which might mean that the hips are lifted way up high and that's fine. Whatever child's pose you're in, you'll start to lift the head back up, make your way back up to hands and knees, uh, and you'll come to seated. So if you have props in the way, set those off to the side. We're setting up for Shavasana. Let's use the blocks and the bolsters. So you'll take the blocks on the tallest height right in front of you toward the front edge of the mat. And you want the blocks to be about shoulder width distance apart. So if they're too far apart, the everything will collapse. So shoulder width distance apart, take the bolster, bring it on top of um, the blocks. So you want to 
you're building a little bridge with the um, blocks and the bolster. And then once you have that, that's at the top of the mat, sit to one side so that you're bringing the body really close up to this bolster bridge without touching it. And then bring the legs up on top of the bolsters and the blocks. We want the thighs to be vertical, which might mean that you scoot the hips forward a little bit, but feet are floating. They're not touching anything. And then you'll come down onto your back, resting the head down. Feel free to get the body closer to the blocks if it's too much. And the reason why the blocks are closer together, because if they're too far apart, you'll feel how everything just starts sinking and the whole thing just falls apart. So adjust if you need to arms down by the sides, palms face up or hands on the body. If that's feeling better to you today, that's always an option for your Shavasana. Close the eyes, take one more breath in through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. Shavasana, let the body go back to breathing on its own. Start to wiggle the fingers and the toes. Bring the feet up on top of the bolster if you're using that bolster bridge. And then roll over to your right side, lying in the fetal position. You can cradle the head and the arms, just keeping the eyes closed. Take a deeper breath in through the nose. Softly out through the mouth. Use the hands, bring yourself up, be mindful of your props, bring yourself up to a comfortable seat, sitting up tall, chest lifted, eyes closed, observing how you feel. Even though this is a cooling practice, it's one that gets really deep into the body. So hopefully you feel open and ready for the day ahead. Bring the hands together in front of you, slight bow of the head, taking a moment to yourself to honor and acknowledge your heart and spirit, as well as everyone around you.
bring the head back up, blink open the eyes. Namaste. Thanks so much for joining. Hope you had a good practice. I'll see you next time.